Hey everybody and welcome to Dev Talks. Today we're here with Kyle Cornwell with the game Enchantress. Kyle, how are you doing today? Not too bad, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's a really, uh, I hope, big deal to have this interview. Yeah, <laughs> well it's glad to have, I'm really glad to have you on. Um, so Enchantress is a psychological thriller game where you play as Megan Sterling in her journey to discover the secrets hidden within the walls of the White, uh, White Rose Orphanage. My bad. So with this one, is this your first release or do you have games released prior? Uh, yes, this is my first official release um, because obviously it's uh, like aiming towards like having the full experience from starting the game, seeing it through to the end. Okay. Um, now, I know it's not on the Steam page anymore, but I think I remember that the game was for a school final. Now, is that the case? Yes, it's for a final major project that you uh, do during a games development course at university. Oh, okay. Um, so have you already gotten the final finished? Is that like graded already, or are you still working on the grade? Um, so the grade is still uh, yet to be confirmed for another two weeks, but hoping... Uh, strongly for a high one and also obviously the game's not finished as of yet just in its early access release yeah okay well that's good actually it's really good though to have somebody who's in college for a lot of inspiring people who do want to you know think about going into game development or are currently in school for game development so really what class did you actually find most difficult when you were in uni or actually while you're still in uni uh, well, I'd say a lot of it would be programming related, as it's not a skill I'd consider to be quite strong in. But, um, you know, I'd say to be at an uh, intermediate level and um, also being with group projects at times can be quite difficult, depending if you uh, had groups of four or at, actually one time was a group of 20. Um, but they did actually work out in our favor in the end. No, that's good. Groups of 20. Oh, my gosh. I can only imagine. Well, that works good, though, because that is sense of like what you would get with a development team. So that's actually really good. Definitely. So um, for the future developers, is there any advice, you know, about uh, going to school or any advice you can give to current students right now about, I guess, how to help them through their classes? Um, I'd say those that consider this type of career or even a hobby, I'd definitely say give it all your worth. I mean, if you have an idea, you definitely want to build upon it, whether it be concept art, prototyping, or just messing around with different features in a game engine. Um, you find what the best area suits you and skills, like I did with mainly design or business within games. The main thing I've learned is that you need to enjoy what you make, otherwise you're just dragging yourself along with something you're not wanting to put your time and effort in. So, Yeah, almost. it's kind of funny because I remember just listening not too long ago to an interview with, um, I can't remember his name right now, but do you remember the um, Yanduri simulator developer? Yeah. Yeah, he's been, I just saw the whole story with him, and it's showing that how something could easily snowball out of control if you don't feel comfortable with what you're doing. So that's a really good, that's a good thing to keep an eye out for. Definitely, yeah. So jumping, in, jumping into the game real quick, um, I know the game has its inspirations from other games, but it almost seems like this has an inspiration from history. Is there like an old UK history lesson here that you're trying to be told? Uh, well, I mean, uh, being based in like a sort of European orphanage, it had a lot of influence from the 1930s, hence the time period it was set, because um, there was a lot of uh, times where children in weren't held in such high respects, and there were a lot of tragedies that took place behind the orphanages that many people don't talk about or know until this day really so it's sort of trying to develop the game's background and theme to demonstrate what has happened but in a calming manner okay yeah that's actually really good because that'll get people to kind of open their eyes maybe do a little bit more research about how times were back then in orphanages exactly okay well looking at the game right now when i went through and i played the uh the game it's it's about 10 to 15 minutes long so it's more of a demo if anything so what does the roadmap looking like for future development so the roadmap for enchantress is quite undecided as of yet i mean it's definitely going to be in further development as i don't see the game in its completed state yet there's much to do and it's really about scheduling the time to pick up where i left off due to obviously personal commitments and working around um, a couple of uh, uh, retakes I have to do so um, bearing in mind I think I mentioned in the early access page on my store that it's going to be nearing the end of the year perhaps to either start development or when it would be finished so it's quite 
close in sight, really, if you look six months ahead. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, because I mean, six months of development, with you being a sole developer, that's a good bit of work to be done in six months. So I'm excited to see what the rest of the game's going to be. Definitely, as am I. So um, I think it's more. Well, sorry. No, um, go ahead. I think it's more. Um, it it wasn't really initially as a game. It did start off as one, but it was more intended as like a user experience because like how you get sort of like the VR based ones or just like. Um, uh, interactive uh, learn your own sort of path exploration thing um, but I can still see it being a game in its own genre really instead oh yeah so you're actually looking for more of it to be just the journey I wouldn't say it, most people would almost say like walking simulator but it's more or less uh, the experience of understanding times back then is what you're saying yeah exactly that oh, okay by the way that's great actually I like I love games like that that kind of put you in the footsteps of somebody else and it shows you their point of view and maybe the struggles that they went through and yeah. instead of actually going through and being like, oh, hey, look, here's a dragon. So that's really good to see. Um, so I do notice, though, when I was playing the game, a right when you start to uh, run into the matron, I don't know if anybody else has had this issue, but I know she's running backwards and she can't hurt you. She just pushes you and can push you throughout the, uh, like outside the boundary walls. Now, I don't know if anybody else, again, has had this issue, but on a technical standpoint, so people can probably more understand bugs and coding, how can something like this happen? So, obviously, I've seen uh, one review with enough that had the same issue that be pushed out of the map, or in fact, you'd be above the ground uh, where you were from the matron, and essentially, she's just meant to be like a threatening press. Her initial goal was to catch you, and you'd either be sent back to the start in the bedroom, um, it was difficult, though, because of the time I had left working on the AI. The best standard I was happy with was patrolling in the one area that you see her in, and she chases the player if spotted. But obviously when she loses, uh, um, she goes back to like a normal path. Um, I think it's due to um, two colliders on the actual matron, which is like where the model is, and then the actual path that the model follows. And one of them is fixed, whereas the other one's... Um, non-static so it keeps moving around so it can't keep up with the animation and um, i would put the current position of the matron in a standard level of ai behavior because you can tell she's not complete but it was just really to demonstrate how she gives that sort of uh, threatening presence as what her character is meant to be so if anything she's like just a general feature to the game she's not going to be a major enemy oh okay yeah i was always wondering i knew again with it being an early access this was small bugs that could be easily fixed but it's always interesting when you see people complain about a bug that's going on and they don't quite know the technical know-hows of how something like this could happen and you know sometimes it can be the simplest thing and to be honest it can be almost the most complicated thing that you'll ever understand so to yeah. know how it goes along and does is a real good insight for people mm. Definitely, and it would. Uh, I can see it being probably between complicated and simple because, um, due to with programming knowledge, it will probably take time to get it to a better standard with less buggy uh, effects. Oh, without a doubt. So, actually, you were you were actually just talking about that this that um, this game is an ongoing development, and I was wondering, you know, how much community input are you wanting in the development of the game, if really any. Um, well, I'd c include a reasonable amount of community input, as it does benefit players to harness full experience and see further potential through the personal involvement. Um, it would be through like regular posts and development videos once development actually starts, and bearing in mind that um, with the feedback I've seen already, I mean, what, what people have found either during before the game was done as an early access with testing, it helped. So I think it would be good to involve the community as much as possible anyway through the yeah, that's great. Feature. Yeah, that's great because I know people usually they'll get into, I think it was like H1Z1, games that have been in early access for a long time. You know, at, at the beginning, their hype's good, but once the community or really the developers stop listening to the community, you start losing that hype for the game. So it's good to see developers who are really engaged in the community to keep that hype going. Definitely. I, yeah, I think it'll be good and they'll actually probably consider getting something out of it as well but it may it, uh, if anything it's more for personal gain this whole project anyway it's not necessarily financial because it was just trying to go through the whole experience of doing a um, per personal game development 
Oh, yeah. And that's always the best thing is a, a work of passion instead of a work of greed. Yeah. So now with this being your first game release, um, are you thinking about once you graduate, are you thinking about staying in the indie sector? Or are you looking to join a bigger development team? Well, if I had the current finances and resources, I'd consider staying in that area as it's really hands-on, but you need a lot of self-motivation. Um, I mean, I'd like to start somewhere within the development team to get proper insight on how the industry works, aside from university experience, because um, that would just give the benefit in knowing how proper uh, industry works on the career side, and then perhaps take that experience and put it together with a couple of developers that are in the same circumstances and we could possibly work well in our own development team yeah that, actually that's a really smart idea i was i've seen a lot of people who've come out of uni and they've immediately gone into indie game development and it's good to know that you know some of them can do it and then some of them struggle with it but to see that you yeah. want to go in see the ins and outs of the entire industry and then possibly throw out on your own that's a that's a smart mindset it would be good to also see what it's like um, probably in depth view and who knows you might stay with it or you just pick up from what you've learned and then adapt it to a newer career path yeah without a doubt well i mean to be honest that was most of the questions that i had for you um is there anything else you actually want to say about the game about yourself or something else you feel people should know uh, i i think the only thing i'd like to say is it's certainly been a journey when i took the product as um uh, my development and where the game is now from its initial concept um, I've grown to love it even with the buggy state it's in it's mainly been about what the players get from the game not the flashy visuals or the smoothest of controls but the story behind it all and I just hope that obviously those that understand the sort of background and know these sort of similar games they sort of appreciate what they're getting from it anyway oh yeah without a doubt um, and to be honest when I was playing through it I, I liked the way the story was going and right when you had me there and you just snapped and took it all away from me. So I'm really interested to see where this story is going to go and where it's going to lead to. So I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out waiting for every update to come out for this game. But thank you. Thank you, Kyle, so much for uh, joining this call and everything. I, it was great to talk to you. It's great to get an insight for new developers who are trying to find their way through this industry. No problem. It was a uh, really I appreciate this, um, and um, it's been very fun as well. Uh, perfect. And guys, if you are interested in this game, I'm going to leave a link down below. You can pick it up. I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it's $3.99? Yes, it's $3.99. $3.99. Yeah. This is going to be more of a game that's going to be developed along the way, and you can watch it be developed from a new developer. So if you guys are interested, take a look down below. If you like the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're always interviewing and looking at new indie games. And you guys have a good day and have fun.